Adina, sometimes I'm flying on an airplane and, and, uh, and thinking, uh, you know, how are humans unique? Uh, we know cultural uh, development and all of that, but at, at the deeper levels. And one of the ways that I like to look at aspects of consciousness is the concept of free will. Now, you've taken the human-animal comparison in relationship to free will and developed some thinking on that. So how, how can that help us understand what it is to be human? Um, well... Let's think more about what it is to, to have free will or make a free decision. Right. Everyone, I think, thinks is central to free will is being able to make a choice or, or a decision. Um, and we have various techniques for looking at how people make decisions. So we, we have, you know, this Libet experiment using EEG and some people have used fMRI to look at people's brains when they make decisions and they've found certain things. Um, but, there's no way that we can, well, actually not no way. It's very difficult to get inside human beings' brains and see what their neurons are doing. And I really think when you're looking, or if you're interested in decision making, you really at some level are going to have to look at the neural level in order to really understand what's going on. What are the mechanisms of decision making? How do they work? How are they modulated? What parts of the brain influence them? What, what contents influence them? Things like that. And uh, so we're, in a way, hamstrung because we can't go in to at least most normal people's brains and, and do this. But what we can do is look at how monkeys do it. And so what I've been looking at are studies in decision-making uh, by recording from single cells in monkey cortex. And there's some really fabulous work out there. Uh, and a lot of it focuses on an area called LIP, uh, and I've spent some time in a lab, Michael Shadlin's lab at University of Washington, where he studies activity in LIP. So where is LIP? LIP is uh, in the parietal cortex, so, so it's kind of back, yeah. back here. Okay. Um, and so there are homologous areas in humans and monkeys, and uh, reasons to think that the kinds of neural activity that we see in that brain area will tell us something about what's going on in our brains when we make decisions. Uh, but there are real questions about how analogous our systems are. So um, what can you conclude about humans on the basis of monkey experiments? I think that's a really interesting question. And I think uh, at different times in human development, we've had different kinds of answers. Descartes, for instance, thought you couldn't tell anything about human free will from monkeys because monkeys were just automatons and we were free. And I've actually encountered people who believe that still. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm interested in exploring in more detail what reasons we might have for thinking that there would be differences or similarities between monkeys and humans. I think it's easy to understand the similarities. The brain looks similar. There are different areas that are the same, visual, different sensories work in the same way. So I think the, the default uh, assumption is that they are very similar. So yeah. what are the kinds of uh, data that you would use to support that they are have aspects of dissimilarity? Well, we can't re really rely on the data uh, for that at this point. It's more conceptual reasons okay. to think that there are differences. Um, so what we have been able to do are develop some tasks that monkeys can do just the same way humans do it. And then I think the inference to thinking that humans would do this task in the same way is a pretty good one. Um, but then there are questions about how relevant are those kinds of tasks for questions about free will. And um, there are some good reasons for thinking that they're very relevant. So there are questions, in fact, some of the sort of standard paradigms for um, your own ability to choose freely are things like, okay, Robert, when I tell you go, decide to raise your right or your left hand. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. <laughs> okay. Did you freely choose to raise that hand? Well, under your direction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you, that, yeah, I, that I, hand I, versus right, the other one, right, right? right? So that is the standard philosophical question for free will, and there's the story of Buridan's ass. Um, well, we can do that kind of experiment with monkeys. We can give them uh, tasks to do in which they get rewarded for giving us the right answer, but we can give them some some trials in which there is no right answer or there's no better answer and see what happens in those cases. And I think those cases are a lot like cases where we don't decide for reasons. Um, but then you might think, well, 
monkeys never decide for reasons and we decide for reasons, right? <laughs> and I think that that's also wrong. So I think there are good reasons to think that monkeys can represent lots of things that we sure. represent. Sure. Things like the way the world is, what is the perceptual evidence, what kind of value do you put on this outcome versus that outcome, waiting, what kind of waiting. costs, various ways to weight your options. Right. And really, I think that's what we do when we deliberate. We figure out how do we weight these various options, and then the process of decision-making sort of falls out from that kind of deliberation and weighting. All that would argue for complete similarity between humans and, uh, and uh, monkeys in this case. Uh, yeah. In terms of analogies, you know, we do more, bigger brain, etc. But are, the, are there any uh, cause for believing in dissimilarity? So I think there are certainly... Qualitative dis differences. I think there are qualitative differences. Uh, what I don't know is whether they make any difference to free will. Okay, so, so what are the differences? Let's just put those on the table. The main difference, I would say, is language. Mm. So we are linguistic creatures, and often when we deliberate, at least when we deliberate at a conscious level, we deliberate in some kind of linguistic or symbolic fashion. What do monkeys do? Mm. It's hard to know. It is clear that they can deliberate symbolically. And so maybe that's enough of an analogy. Uh, it, what my own view is, if I had to say something now, right. uh, is the real difference that language gives us is that it gives us an ability to represent things that monkeys can't represent. So we can deliberate about options that they can't deliberate about, but that in general, the general process is pretty much the same. So the mechanics is the same. What goes in as the inputs uh, would be different. But that could be a huge output difference. Uh, well, it's clearly yeah. a huge output difference. We yeah. can do all kinds of things monkeys can't do. Right. Um, but, but, but you have to distinguish what an individual can do versus what the accumulation of culture can do in order to make the comparison fair. Because once you get into a cultural thing, it's a, I think it's a totally different category. Yeah, but I think even when you talk about in, individuals, right. I could give you the task that the monkeys do. And in some one them, trial, yeah. you could learn the task. Yeah, some, some tasks they do better, actually. Yes, but they never learn it on, or very rarely oh, okay. do they learn it on one trial. And, you give me a lot you know, of credit. One, <laughs> that's true, we should try it out. Uh, it's not clear whether they don't learn it in one trial because we can't convey it to them, or whether they don't have the cognitive flexibility oh. to switch their networks and their sets uh -huh. in a such a way that they can get their brain to do the thing okay. that we want them to do. Okay. Um, and I think those are really interesting questions and potentially important questions for uh, how to think about freedom in humans and whether there's an analogous kind of thing in monkeys. Uh, so I don't think that the answers are, are completely in. So language, I think, is, is the major thing. But then there's awareness, self-awareness. Uh, so you might think that to make a decision freely, you have to be aware of yourself as choosing in a position when you're free or, or of being an uncaused agent mm -hmm. or of having moral responsibility, something, something like that. I, I think that's too inflationary. I don't mm -hmm. think that, that we need all that, but um, I'm not sure that I've come to a firm conclusion mm -hmm. on that.